Hi, these comments are for HBC, and I am Michael from BetterTofelScores.com, and you're one of my TOEFL Writing Boot Camp Core students, right? So you get two error correction videos as my TOEFL Writing Boot Camp Core students. So the purpose here is to look at the writing, to give you ideas of what your strengths and weaknesses are, and to recommend some lessons to help you improve and to see how you can take what you wrote and change some things so you get exactly 5 out of 5 or 30 out of 30 points, right? Okay, after reading the essay, uh, I think that you're in the 3 area. I'm going to say right around 3.5 out of 5, say 22, maybe 21, 22 points out of 30. Uh, I think here... Not really as much language use, but it's more of your organization and how you develop your ideas. I think you can improve in those areas a little bit more. Now let's try one thing. I want to try, let's see what the uh, Microsoft Word thinks about your grade level first of all. Let's see where you are with that. couple of grammar mistakes, not going to worry about that, don't check, don't check. Okay, so you're at a flesh King K grade level of 11. Your sentences are 22, so I think you probably want to go up about four or five words per sentence. That'll elevate your grade level a little bit. You can probably improve your vocabulary also. Characters per word, 4.6 means you're using some shorter vocabulary words in there. So you need to get this closer to 12 or 13. I think that is uh, a good goal, right? Okay, so let's go through paragraph by paragraph. First, I will make corrections. And then second, I might reorganize a few things. For any successful business to develop, I'm going to put not we. Employers need people to um, How about remain productive, whether it's a small, how about just say whether it's small or large scale industries, everyone needs a job And what is it? It means industries, right? Whether to make these businesses. You, you don't want to say it. It is singular. Industries is plural. And I'm going to restate instead of industries, I'll say businesses. To make these businesses victorious. If I am, no, no, no. If I were. Why am I doing that? What did you say? You said would. If I am, I will. If I were, I would. If I were the boss of my company. So you're having problems with commas. So these introductory elements, for example, we have an introductory prepositional phrase here that precedes the subject and the verb. We need a comma there right after that introductory phrase. Or we have a noun clause, which is kind of an introduction to the beginning of the sentence, whether it's a small or large scale. Let's get rid of A. Whether it's small or large scale industries, everyone needs a job to make these businesses victorious. If I were the boss of my company, and I'm going to put definitely after the pronoun. I would put in between the auxiliary and the main verb. That's a very popular word order for adverbs, right? I would definitely choose people. Who 
you can make my business more prosperous and fruitful. But prosperous means fruitful. There's no need to say both, right? Who can make my business more pros prosperous? Let me say. I'm just writing down some of your problems here, punctuation. And then you probably need to rephrase this. We need to say something about a decision that companies have to make in terms of who they hire. How about maybe, therefore, hiring an individual can have both advantages and disadvantages, whether I choose older, younger employees. Don't forget the poor OS there, which I will be sharing in detail in the following essay. Don't even use that. Don't put things in there that don't do anything, right? I don't think that does very much there. I went ahead and did some editing to your paragraph, so I encourage you to write around 100 words for that introduction. Your entire essay is only 317 words, right? Notice the introduction that I put. I added on to what you wrote. We now have 113 words, so let's see the changes I made. For any successful business to develop, employers need people to help these companies remain productive. Whether it's a small accounting firm with 15 to 20 professionals or a huge retail store like Walmart with thousands of employees, finding the right workers will affect the success of these business institutions. Excuse me. In this regard, companies are continually searching for those employees who will be the right fit, thus helping to further the economic missions of those businesses. As a result, if I were the boss of my company, I would definitely choose people who could make my business more prosperous through their productive and loyal efforts. Therefore, hiring older or younger employees have both advantages and disadvantages. Right, so you have some kind of an introduction that kind of ends to this, so we know that you're talking about the advantages and disadvantages of older, and then younger workers. Okay, let's go to the next paragraph. You say first, hiring older workers can be beneficial <coughs> as we had to spend less time on training since they're already trained to do work and it saves How about saves me, then put saves me time and money. On the other hand, hiring a younger worker. Now, why we got younger workers in here? No, 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 no. Now, then you go back to older workers. And then you end up not developing anything enough. So, we need to get rid of this. And we have to develop this paragraph a little bit more. So, however, since older workers may not have experience with advanced technologies such as the internet and computers as compared to newbies, so this could be a benefit of younger workers as they cost less. Okay, so this paragraph here, this is what we got to deal with now, right? I think it's better to just focus on older workers 
in this paragraph and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of older workers. So let's take a look at what I did with this second paragraph. So I, I got rid of the younger worker thing. So roughly half of the paragraph talks about a benefit of an older worker. Then the other half of the paragraph talks about a disadvantage of an older worker. Right, so notice what I said. Notice how specific I am in the details that I provide. That's where you can really get a high score. You're using that really, really precise, original type uh, ideas in there. It says first, hiring older workers can be beneficial as employers as employers have to spend less time on training since they're already trained to do the work. How about since these older workers are already trained to do the work? How about saves companies time and money? You have to say, for example, my father works as a manager of a lab in Hemet, and he's been in charge of all the COVID-19 testing for the last year or so. Since he's worked for that lab for more than 30 years, he knows exactly how to run the lab efficiently. Therefore, if he changes, if he changes his job to work for another hospital, that new institution will be able to benefit from all his knowledge. Then we have however. However, older workers may not have experience with advanced technology such as the internet and computers. Let's get rid of that idea and say, in fact, my father had to learn some new computer technology in order to run his laboratory efficiently. But since he is older, Let's say present perfect here. My father has had to learn some new computer technology in order to run his laboratory effectively. But since he is older, he's had a hard time getting a handle on all this new technology. In fact, management had to bring in a younger worker to show my dad how to operate. We'll put to operate the new technology so that the lab techs could continue the lab testing accurately and quickly. Right, so that's what I would say there. Now the next part, it, the, the problem too is you said too much about older workers. I think the purpose here is to explain objectively the advantages and the disadvantages of older and younger workers. But because you spent so much time talking about older workers, it kind of creates a kind of a bias like you favor those older workers more than younger workers. So you have to be careful. You want to make sure that in this type of writing prompt, if you're being asked to write objectively, you should do exactly that. So I don't think we need this. I'm going to get rid of this part. However, with newbies, it's hard because they don't have enough experience and leadership skills to tackle. You're talking about the loyalty that younger workers don't have too, but again, you're bringing up too many different things in the paragraph, right? So the writer that does everything does nothing. So we need... Uh, Second, younger workers beneficial can save companies 
money since they are paid lower wages due to their limited experience, right? Okay, now we have to kind of illustrate that, right? We need to illustrate this idea and then we can talk about this as part of the paragraph too. However, with with newbies it's hard because they they don't have enough experience and leadership skills to tackle during any production issues, right? So that would be the disadvantage. So now we need to build this paragraph and I'm going to build it to about 200 words. Notice how in the edited paragraph here I stay focused only on younger workers. So I have a topic sentence here that talks about younger workers. I have another topic sentence which talks about younger workers here. So it says, second, younger workers are beneficial in that they can save companies money since they're paid lower wages due to the limited experience. To illustrate, the average college graduate who is hired generally makes about fifty to $60,000 annually since these new workers have limited work experience related to their jobs. Don't even need to say that. On the other hand, workers with 20 to 30 years of experience are paid around $150,000 to $200,000 annually. Notice how <coughs> I don't focus too much on this. I'm back to younger workers again. Thus, companies can save thousands of dollars annually if they hire younger, less experienced workers. Now we make a change. Conversely, younger workers who do not have a lot of experience lack, maybe let's soften the tone a bit, may lack the leadership skills needed to tackle complex production issues. For instance, my 30-year-old friend works for Toyota Incorporated in the United States, and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, his company has experienced a decrease in the number of autos being purchased by more than 50%. My friend had never experienced an issue like this before. So you had to get marketing ideas from some of the older workers who had already gone through similar difficult economic similar economic difficulties stemming from the Great Recession of 2008 and 2010. So in the end, based on the above ideas, I would say there are always pros and cons for either older or younger employees. I may end up hiring both older and younger employees who will bring my company both, who will bring my company prosperity prosperity and success. So I'm going to change these to nouns because you said bring. So usually if you said who would be, I would say prosperous and successful, but but after the be verb, we typically we use an adjective in many cases, but in this case you have bring, which is a regular verb, so I think a noun is going to work better there, not an adjective. So younger employees who will bring my company prosperity and success. I don't think you need to use the word both. You could put it in there, but it's not needed. Okay, so you had 317 words. Okay, I wrote 522, right? So I increased, I increased it by about 200 words. How did I do that? I used a lot more depth in those two body paragraphs. I talked about the benefits how about the advantages and the disadvantages of older workers? Then I talked about the advantages and disadvantages of younger workers. And then we have the conclusion here. That's kind of where we are. So let's take a look at what I did with this second paragraph. So I, I got rid of the younger worker thing. So roughly half of the paragraph 
talks about a benefit of an older worker. Then the other half of the paragraph talks about a disadvantage of an older worker. Right, so notice what I said. Notice how specific I am in the details that I provide. That's where you can really get a high score. You're using that really, really precise, original type uh, ideas in there. It says first, hiring older workers can be beneficial. As employers, as employers have to spend less time on training since they're already trained to do the work. How about since these older workers are already trained to do the work? How about saves companies time and money? You have to say, for example, my father works as a manager of a lab in Hemet, and he has been in charge of all the COVID-19 testing for the last year or so. Since he's worked for that lab for more than 30 years, he knows exactly how to run the lab efficiently. Therefore, if he changes, if he changes his job to work for another hospital, that new institution will be able to benefit from all his knowledge. Then we have however. However, older workers may not have experience with advanced technology such as the internet and computers. Let's get rid of that idea and say, in fact, my father had to learn some new computer technology in order to run his laboratory efficiently. But since he is older, Let's say present perfect here. My father has had to learn some new computer technology in order to run his laboratory effectively, but since he is older, he's had a hard time getting a handle on all this new technology. In fact, management had to bring in a younger worker to show my dad how to operate we'll put to operate the new technology so that the lab techs could continue the lab testing accurately and quickly. Right, so that's what I would say there. Now the next part, it, the, the problem too is you said too much about older workers. I think the purpose here is to explain objectively the advantages and the disadvantages of older and younger workers. But because you spent so much time talking about older workers, it kind of creates a kind of a bias like you favor those older workers more than younger workers. So you have to be careful. You want to make sure that in this type of writing prompt, if you're being asked to write objectively, you should do exactly that. So I don't think we need this. I'm going to get rid of this part. However, with newbies, it's hard because they don't have enough experience and leadership skills to tackle. You're talking about the loyalty that younger workers don't have too, but again, you're bringing up too many different things in the paragraph, right? So the writer that does everything does nothing. So we need... Uh, Second, younger workers beneficial can save companies money since they are paid lower wages due to their limited experience, right? OK, 
Okay, now we have to kind of illustrate that, right? We need to illustrate this idea, and then we can talk about this as part of the paragraph too. However, with with newbies, it's hard because they they don't have enough experience and leadership skills to tackle during any production issues, right? So that would be the disadvantage. So now we need to build this paragraph, and I'm going to build it to about 200 words. Notice how in the edited paragraph here, I stay focused only on younger workers. So I have a topic sentence here that talks about younger workers. I have another topic sentence which talks about younger workers here. So it says, second, younger workers are beneficial in that they can save companies money since they're paid lower wages due to the limited experience. To illustrate, the average college graduate who is hired generally makes about fifty to $60,000 annually since these new workers have limited work experience related to their jobs. Don't even need to say that. On the other hand, workers with 20 to 30 years of experience are paid around $150,000 to $200,000 annually. Notice how <coughs> I don't focus too much on this. I'm back to younger workers again. Thus, companies can save thousands of dollars annually if they hire younger, less experienced workers. Now we make a change. Conversely, younger workers who do not have a lot of experience lack, maybe let's soften the tone a bit, may lack the leadership skills needed to tackle complex production issues. For instance, my 30-year-old friend works for a Toyota Incorporated in the United States, and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, his company has experienced a decrease in the number of autos being purchased by more than 50%. My friend had never experienced an issue like this before. So you had to get marketing ideas from some of the older workers who had already gone through similar difficult economic similar economic difficulties stemming from the Great Recession of 2008 and 2010. So in the end, based on the above ideas, I would say there are always pros and cons for either older or younger employees. I may end up hiring both older and younger employees who will bring my company both, who will bring my company prosperity prosperity and success. So I'm going to change these to nouns because you said bring. So usually if you said who would be, I would say prosperous and successful, but but after the be verb, we typically will use an adjective in many cases. But in this case, you have bring, which is a regular verb. So I think a noun is going to work better there, not an adjective. So younger employees who will bring my company prosperity and success. I don't think you need to use the word both. You could put it in there, but it's not needed. Okay, so you had 317 words. Okay, I wrote 522, right? So I increased, I increased it by about 200 words. How did I do that? I used a lot more depth in those two body paragraphs. I talked about the benefits uh, how about the advantages and the disadvantages of older workers? Then I talked about the advantages and disadvantages of younger workers. And then we have the conclusion here. That's kind of where we are. Now let's take a look at it one more time. Remember that yours was about 11.1 .1 was the grade level, right? So we created some longer sentences here. I think I increased your sentence length of about three words per sentence. I think that's what I did. So let's take a look in uh, Microsoft. Okay, so here we go. So we are at 13.7.
is the flesh king k grade level to me that's college level that's enough you don't well i'm gonna do 19 or 20 michael don't do that i think right around 12 or 13 14 that's probably pretty good right notice how we're now at we have a little bit bigger not that much but 4.8 4 characters per word we are at uh, 24.9 or 25 words per sentence. That's right in the middle between 20 and 30, about 25 words as your average sentence length is pretty good for academic writing. Okay, so th those are some changes I made there. Now let's take a look at it one more time. And then I'm gonna go into my online course and tell you some things I think you need to focus on to improve your writing. So for any business to develop, employers need people to help these companies remain productive. Whether it's a small accounting firm with 15 to 20 professionals or a huge retail store like Walmart with thousands of employees, finding the right workers will affect the success of these business institutions. Notice the word length here. That's 32 words, right? In this regard, companies are continually searching for those employees who will be the right fit, thus helping them, thus helping to further the economic missions of those businesses. As a result, if I were the boss of my company, I would definitely choose people who could make my business more prosperous through their productive and loyal efforts. Therefore, hiring older and younger employees have both advantages and disadvantages. So then we go to the next paragraph. First, hiring older workers can be beneficial as employers have to spend less time on training since these older workers are already trained to do work. They're, I would just say already trained, maybe don't need to say all this. Yeah, let me say this, give me a minute. Yeah, before I lose this, this is a good idea. Sorry for the delay. Task two. Got it. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Okay, first, hiring older workers can be beneficial as employers have to spend less time on training since these older workers are already trained. And it saves time and money. For example, my father works as the manager of a lab in Hemet, and he has been in charge of all the COVID-19 testing for the last year or so. Since he has worked for that lab for more than 30 years, he knows exactly how to run the lab efficiently. Therefore, if he changes his job to work for another hospital, that new institution will be able to benefit from all this knowledge. However, older workers may not have the experience with advanced technology such as the internet and computers. In fact, my father has had to learn some new computer technology in order to run his lab effectively. But since he's older, he's had a hard time getting a handle on all the new technology. In fact, management had to bring in a younger worker to show my, my dad how to operate the new technology so that the lab techs could continue their lab testing accurately and quickly. So notice how when I, when I bring this example, I kind of refer back to what I've already said here why did I do that? That shows depth. So basically we have we have almost 200 words here focusing on just two things, right? The benefits or the advantages and disadvantages of older workers. That is it. And with the advantage, it's, it's just talking about the experience. And then the disadvantage is 
the lack of experience with advanced technology as a disadvantage. So it's pretty focused. That's what you want to do with your paragraphs. Show that you can really focus, you can stick with an idea, and write about it in some depth. Okay, the next paragraph. Second, younger workers are beneficial in that they can save companies money since they are paid lower wages due to the limited experience. You see, I could have stopped it there and moved on to a new topic, but that doesn't show depth. That's why I said to illustrate. The average college graduate who is hired generally makes around fifty to $60,000 annually since these new workers have limited work experience. So what I'm doing is, is I'm continuing on that topic, developing it more. And then I'm contrasting it. On the other hand, workers with 20 to 30 years of experience are paid around 150 to $200,000 annually. Thus, companies can save thousands of dollars annually if they hire younger, less experienced workers. Conversely, younger workers who do not have a lot of experience may lack the leadership skills needed to tackle complex production issues. For instance, my 30-year-old friend works for a Toyota Incorporated in the United States, and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, his company has experienced a decrease in the number of autos being purchased by more than 50%. My friend had never experienced an issue like this before, uh, so he had to get marketing ideas from some of the older workers who had already gone through similar economic difficulties uh, stemming from the Great Recession of 2008-2010. So I just made this stuff up, actually, too. And you can do that, too. No problem. Make it up. Make it sound good. Make it specific. And take time to develop your points. That's what you want to get from this error correction video. Then you can say, instead of so, that's a little too informal, to sum, to sum up. You could say this, I guess, but not in the end. Uh, to sum up, based on the above ideas, I would say there are always pros and cons for either older or younger workers. I'm going to get rid of that and say, hiring older or younger employees has its pros and cons, right? I may end up hiring both older and younger employees who will bring my company prosperity and success. How about say indeed there? I may end up hiring both older and younger employees who will bring my company prosperity and success. Now the question is, based on what you did, what are the strengths and weaknesses of your writing? What are specific lessons that you can review that you think will help you to, to improve your writing? And that's kind of what I want to look at right now. Okay, so we're looking at, at my online TOEFL course, right? So vocabulary... Uh, if you improve vocabulary, I, I think you probably improve a little bit in that area, but this is a long-term goal. Uh, focus on lesson number four, five, and six. Pronunciation, irrelevant. Okay, let's look at grammar. Let's see what we have here. I wrote down some ideas here. Okay, so let's see what we have. I think verb tenses, I think lesson 16, count and non-count nouns, I think is important for you. Uh, word forms, lesson number 12. Lesson 17, verb tenses, 17.1, 2, and 3. I think you can work in those areas. Uh, what else here? Lesson 26, exactly, sentence variety, and then 26.2, sentence variety practice exercises, and then lesson 27, being more concise, and then lesson 28, I think, uh, when to use commas, I think you need to go over that lesson, and then 28.1, making sentences more concise practice exercises, I think that's a good 
listen for you also. That, those are my, my feedback right there. Okay, now let's go to the writing part of my web website. Let's see what we have here. Okay, writing weaknesses, let's see. You, you understand how to structure your ideas, so I think overall you're in pretty good shape there. I think how to show depth and complexity of thought, lesson 5.5, check out that one, and then lesson 5.6, writing the perfect paragraph. That's a good lesson for you right now. And then lesson number eight, how to make your writing more coherent. But it's more how you develop your ideas. I think that's where you can make some improvements in. And I think that's it. I don't want to, I don't want to bombard you with too many different things there. So overall, on this essay that you wrote, I gave you a score of about 22 out of 30 points. You had 317 words. I edited what you wrote. I added another 200 words. It has about 500 words on there. And that's what you need to do to get to that perfect 30 out of 30 points. So you need a much stronger introduction, raise the topic a little bit more, then spend more time developing your points in the body paragraphs. Make sure you don't try to do too many different things there. All right, and thank you for doing uh, this practice test. Remember, you have one more error correction video. After that, I don't do any more error correction. However, you can keep sending me writing practice, right, daily. And I will still comment and score it. I just won't error correct it like I did in this video. This is very time consuming, as you can see. All right, thank you. Keep up the good work here. Step by step, little by little, you can reach.